Hello and welcome back to another episode of Math with Mullins. I'm your host, Miss Mullins. We're going to get started today on learning about integers and absolute value. Um, so make sure you go ahead and label your notes 1.1, integers and absolute value. Something I didn't tell you about before um, is that the numbers in front represent the chapter. That's the first number. And then the second number after that represents the lessons. This is chapter 1, lesson 1. Um, today in your notes you're going to be writing down nine things, so make sure that you're looking for those nine things, and some of them might have an extra thing or two, like in part A, part B, or part C. Let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to look at is what is the definition of an integer. An integer is just a positive, a negative, or negative whole number. So you could have one, negative one, you could have one. You could have negative 343, positive 343. Oops, that should be a 3, not a 5. Good job. So anything that can be a whole number and can be positive or negative, that is going to be an integer. Go ahead and pause the video right now because you're going to copy the definition of an integer and maybe pick one or two examples to do, to write down as well. Go ahead and click play when you're ready to go on to number 2. The second thing we're going to write down is what is absolute value? Absolute value of an integer is just basically how far that number is or the integer is from zero on a number line. Um, how you're going to be writing absolute value is you're basically going to be saying, you're basically going to be giving a number a wall. So like the absolute value of negative four, I just put negative four in between two walls or two um, parallel lines. Anytime you're finding the absolute value of a number, you're just counting the steps it is from zero. So the absolute value of negative four is four because negative four is one, two, three, four steps from zero. You can do the same thing with positive numbers. The absolute value of positive four is also f still four because it is one, two, three, four steps from zero on the number line. So anytime that you have an absolute value symbol, you're essentially just seeing, seeing how many steps does it take to get from that number to zero if you're on a number line. Go ahead and take the time now to pause the video and write down the topic with the definition and then the picture of the number line with the two examples provided. Once you're done, click play and we'll get started on the next one, trying some absolute value questions. All right, here we are, we're gonna find the absolute value of two. You can either see this written in written form, or you can also see like this. Just remember, these two walls, that means absolute value. We know that absolute value is the distance the number is from zero on a number line, so the absolute value of two is two. Pretty easy, right? The next one we're going to look at, finding the absolute value of negative 3. The absolute value of negative 3 is just how many steps negative 3 is from 0 on the number line. Negative 3 is 3 steps away, so that means the absolute value of negative 3 is 3. Ta-da! Here's where you're going to pause the video and try some yourself. So again, you're going to pause and write down what you see, answer it, once you're done answering them, click play to check your answers. All right, here we go. We're going to check our work. Number three, the absolute value of seven is seven. Number four, the absolute value of negative five is five. Pretty, pretty simple. What we're going to look at next in our notes is comparing absolute value. Comparing absolute value would just mean you'd have to solve the absolute value and then compare those numbers using a less than sign, a greater than sign, or an equal sign. Remember, here's just an easy way that maybe your teachers before have taught you. The less than and greater than signs should be eating the bigger number. Kind of like an alligator eats a lot of food, the alligator should eat the bigger number. So it should have its mouth open to the bigger number. If I'm going to compare 1 and the absolute value of negative 4, I first have to solve this absolute value situation that I've got going on. The absolute value of negative 4 is 4, so I'm essentially comparing 1 and 4. I know that 1 is smaller than 4, so my answer would be 1 is less than 4. 
noticing that the alligator has his mouth open to the number four. So back to where we started, one is less than the absolute value of negative four. What you're gonna do is go ahead and try some of these. So go ahead and click pause to try them. Once you're done, click play to check your work. So number five, we're gonna start by checking it. It says the absolute value of negative two comparing to the just the normal number, number negative one. Remember, the absolute value of negative two is just equal to two, so you're essentially comparing the number two and the number negative one. Two is larger than negative one, so I'm gonna open up the alligator's mouth to the two. So basically, the absolute value of negative two, which is two, is greater than negative one. Number six, I've got the absolute value of 10. I'm gonna solve that first, that's gonna be 10. This one's still gonna be 11 over here. 10 is still smaller than 11, so the absolute value of 10 is less than 11. The alligator's mouth is open to 11. For number seven, I'm comparing negative seven and the absolute value of six. The absolute value of six is six, so how do I compare negative seven to positive six? All positive numbers are always gonna be bigger than negative one, so I'm gonna open the alligator's mouth to the absolute value of six. Negative seven is less than the absolute value of six. Number eight, you should have seen though, you're comparing nine and the absolute value of negative nine. The absolute value of negative nine is equal to nine. So when you compare nine to nine, they're not less than or greater than one another, they're simply equal to one another. How did you do? The last part of our notes we're gonna look at is how to order numbers whenever you're given um, absolute value and you're gonna try to order them from least to greatest, okay? Before you start ordering them, I would suggest solving the absolute values first. So the absolute value of three is three, negative two is still the same, the absolute value of negative one is one, I've got negative five staying the same, and seven staying the same. Now I'm gonna order them. Remember on the number line, you've got zero in the middle, and you've got all your positive numbers to the right, and all your negative ones to the left. The further you get to the left, the less you go. The further you get to the right, the greater you go. So, if I'm looking at these numbers, the number that's going to be the, to the farthest to the left will be negative five. Negative five is going to be way over here, maybe like right here on the number line. So negative four would be here. Next up, I would have negative two. I'm going to check these off as I go. The next one between three, one, and seven, I'm going to have one, and then three, and then finally seven. To write my final answer correctly, I'm just going to write them back in their correct original terms. Negative five was still negative five, and negative two was still negative two. One, though, was originally the absolute value of negative one. It's still equal to one though, that's fine. Three was the absolute value of three, and seven was just original form of seven. So final answer, negative five, negative two, the absolute value of negative one, the absolute value of negative three, and then seven from least to greatest order. Here you're gonna try this one by yourself. Again, doing the same type of concept, ordering from least to greatest, and just remembering your number line. In the middle you have zero, and you've got positive numbers on the right, negative numbers on the left. Negative one, negative two, negative three. Over here on the left will always be less. Over here on the right will always be greater. Okay, go ahead and take the time now. Pause the video. Try the question. Once you're done, click play to check your answers. All right, let's see how we did. First thing you should have done was figure out what are the absolute values going to be equal to. Six will just stay a six. The absolute value of nine will be nine. Negative three stays the same. The absolute value of negative five is five, and negative six will also stay the same. The smallest number that we have up here, since we're ordering from least to greatest, is negative six, then negative three, then five, then six, then nine. 
writing them back in their original form is the way to go to find your correct final answer. Negative 6 was correct, correctly written, so was negative 3. 5 was actually the absolute value of negative 5. 6 was written in regular form, and 9 was written before as the absolute value of 9. So here is how you should have written your final answer. For your test, you need to make sure that you write down the numbers in their original form to get your question correct. That's going to be all we have for today. Go ahead and make sure that you have, have everything written in your notes and check the board to see what your next steps are. Thanks for tuning in and have a great day.